This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one website platform for entrepreneurs to stand out and succeed online. Whether you're just starting out or managing a growing brand, Squarespace makes it easy for you to create a beautiful website, engaging with your audiences, and selling anything from products to content to time. All in one place, all on your terms. Hey, Spuds, it's Jamie. Welcome back to another video of Fast Channel. I don't know, but welcome either way. I'm very glad to have you here for today's installment of Am I the Butthole? Yes, we are today going through that wonderful subreddit Reddit of AITA and having a little read of some specifically LGBTQ plus related ones because that is what I do here on this channel. If you like this type of content or you want more broader topics then my wife Shaba creates this content a lot over on her channel and we do it together in the form of a podcast 1-800 drama. Just various different things for you to look at but today we are specifically looking at the sexual orientation coming out trans related just generally LGBTQ plus themed am I the butthole stories. Are you ready? I am. Um, woohoo. I think I'm now far enough in the video to say asshole. So, am I the asshole for how I, a 37 year old man, reacted to my son, a 17 year old man, coming out to me? So, as the parent, are you the asshole for how you reacted to your child coming out to you? That is very vague. That's a very broad, broad title, and it really, really depends on the reaction. Okay, this is going to be interesting. I don't know if this is going to go down the route of like homophobia or or just being uncomfortable, or just, I don't know, nonchalant reaction? I have no idea. Let's read on. That's why these posts are more than just a title. It's been pointed out my title wording makes the post seem worse than it is. I apologise for that. It wasn't my intention. Interesting. So we've automatically had like a little update at the beginning. So I'm assuming a lot of people were reading that and thinking, ah, he must have been homophobic, so maybe he wasn't. Let's read on. So I've always known my son had an interest in men. He was slow on the pickup of incognito mode, and from the searches he made, I figured he was at least bi-curious, if that's a proper term for it, since he hit puberty. Well, last year he started bringing a boy around, and it was obvious they were dating, to the point I figured that he knew I knew, and it wasn't a big deal to anyone. Okay, so this dad's just known. Okay, it definitely doesn't sound homophobic. He's kind of like, I've literally always known that my son is into men and he brought a boy around that he was dating and it was all fine and it didn't need to be a big deal. This is quite sweet because this is kind of how like LGBT plus kids should feel bringing a partner back. Just the same as like a straight kid would feel like you don't need to announce your sexual orientation. You don't walk into the house and go, hello parents, I am straight and this is my girlfriend. Well, apparently I was wrong. After school yesterday, he and his boyfriend came up to me and said there was something really important they needed to tell me. My son said that they were dating and had been for a year. Well, I was surprised that he wasn't aware I knew and was a bit thrown off. My mouth moved faster than my brain and I said, well, that's pretty effing gay. Oh. Okay, right. I feel like I can see where this is going because to dad, this was just like a nothing thing he already knew, but the son is probably coming at this from the perspective of being terrified and building up the courage to do this for a long time and not knowing what to expect and then to be hit with that. Okay. Now, I thought it was Pete comedy since it is in fact gay. However, I understand that using the word gay in that way gives it a very negative undertone, hence the mouth faster than brain comment. Okay, sure, yes, it does, but also I can see as like a dad wanting to inject humour into the situation and thinking that it would probably make his son feel more comfortable. It's not the worst thing, but I can also, it's maybe not the right tone for what's happening. Now my son and I are usually pretty edgy with our humour, this being fairly tame for the stuff we joke about, while probably not appropriate for the situation, it wasn't our norm for a conversation between us. However, he and his boyfriend were very, very upset and left. Ah, I'm probably the arsehole, but I thought I would check and see if you all had some advice on what I could say to fix it. He currently won't respond to my texts or calls. I think there's a little update that says, I did not expect this to gain so much traction. It's a bit intimidating, lol. I'm reading all the comments though. Anyway, here's a small update. He's at his grandparents' house, which I knew. He told them to tell me he'll be home tomorrow after school to talk. I'll update you after the conversation. Thank you for your responses, I really appreciate it. Okay, what would my badge be? I don't know if I'm ready to give a badge yet. I need to talk it through with myself a little bit. Son comes out, has probably been building up to this for a while, unbeknownst to the dad, had no idea that the dad already knew. The dad already knows and isn't fully aware that his son is completely unaware that he knows. So they are coming at this from completely different angles where the son's probably been building up for a really long time to come out and decided to do it with his boyfriend so that he had moral support there, maybe wasn't sure how things would go down with his dad, and his dad's response is, well, that's pretty f***. 
gay. I think the tone and how that was said could read into this a lot. See, the thing is, I don't know why the son is upset. I don't know if the son is upset because he thinks that the dad doesn't accept and was making like a rude comment and not being accepting towards him and his boyfriend and their sexualities, or if he's upset because the dad made a joke out of a serious situation. Like, he can see that the dad accepts him, but he didn't appreciate the humour in that moment and is just upset by it. There could even be a combination of the two thinking, well, that wasn't an appropriate time to joke, and now I'm not sure if you're actually accepting or not because of the joke. I think probably, like, a soft yes, you are the asshole, just because of, like, an inability to read the room in that moment, and yes, it might seem like something that you've had a long time to process and you're just fine with it and it doesn't mean anything to you as a father that your child is gay or LGBT plus in some way. But yeah, I feel like the way to respond is more kind of like a letting them know that you've known and it's totally fine with you and then you can joke about it. I think the joke comes after reassuring your child that everything is okay and you still love them because that is what LGBT plus kids need so badly because so many of them don't get it and I think we're all so primed to feel like we're not going to get it that anything that isn't a kind of yes I support you or yes this is okay like I'm here for you can feel like a rejection so it could be that the son took it as that and was like well, why the f*** are you joking about this situation that's not appropriate but at the same time it was not meant with any negative or homophobic or rude intentions I feel like this is just maybe like a classic stereotypical dad response when something serious happens but kind of poor taste joke at a poor time. So yes, you are the bumhole, but kind of gently. You're just a little bumhole, just a tiny, tiny little asshole, in my opinion. I mean, as long as underneath all that there is just like acceptance, then tiny bumhole. Interesting. I want to see what other people have to say about this, and I have found a few comments for each of these posts today. So are you ready? You're the asshole for the wording. I won't lie, as someone who's been out and proud for years, that joke made me laugh my ass off, but your son needed support more than humour. In the grand scheme of things, though, I was expecting much worse from the title, so I think if you just apologise and explain that you meant it in a humorous way and that you fully accept him and his partner, you and your son will be fine. And then OP has said, I suppose it is a little clickbaity when you consider how other parents react. Yeah, because all I see before I decide to include them it is the title, so I didn't read this story and I was like, oh, okay, we're gonna have a homophobic parent here in this one, and we haven't. I completely agree with the commenter that like, yes, as someone who is an adult and has been out for a long time and has a support network around me, I can see the humour in what the dad said. Poor taste, but like between family, between friends, between people who accept each other, I can see the humour and I would laugh if somebody said that to me. But in that moment, that is not what the son needed. Even if that is the dynamic of their relationship most of the time, in that moment, the son needed love and support and reassurance and then a joke. I do also agree that if that was explained to the son, that it was just a joke to like their usual like bantery relationship, but dad does accept him and everything. I, I think it'll be fine. Someone else says, you are the asshole, but I see what you were trying to do. I'm glad that from the sounds of it, your son has a very supportive parent in you. A lot of us don't. So for real, props to you. But your son only had one chance at coming out to you. It's a big moment for him and your response was to make a joke. I know you were trying to indicate that this wasn't a big deal to you in a bad sense, but I get why it was hurtful for your son and his boyfriend. Maybe apologizing and asking if you can have a second chance at acknowledging this moment for him would help turn it around. Yeah, I completely agree with that as well. I'm clearly outnumbered, but I think not the asshole. okay? Just somebody that made a joke at an inappropriate time. Who hasn't? You live and learn. You clearly don't judge your kid for his sexuality, and I assume you just wanted to show acceptance by breaking the tension with an attempt at humour. Just apologise for joking during a moment that was clearly important to him, and ask how you can best support him moving forward. I also agree with that, but I think given the size of the moment, and the lack of landing of the joke, <laughs> that's why I'm doing like small asshole. Like compared to other stories that we talk about and react to, calling this dad an asshole does feel very extreme. So I really do mean it when it's like small. It was just an inappropriate move at the wrong time, but it was done with the best of intentions. And like he's nowhere near an asshole on the scale of other people that get the asshole badge. So he's just got a tiny little asshole badge. But there's a bit of me that just does find it funny. It does show a depth to the support and like just how much it doesn't matter to this dad who his son loves and I think that is very sweet and I think when the son's had a moment to think about that and, and have like a proper conversation with his dad and realise that he has support there then hopefully that's something he can realise too. Yeah teeny weeny tiny little asshole for the first one. And whilst we're in 
between am I the asshole stories guess who's back I mean yes it's clearly me because this is my video but I'm back with another job and thank you again to Squarespace for letting me get stuck into the fantasy what do we think I'm doing now hmm thank you for today's job suggestion as I'm now venturing into the very specific business of dodgem cars yes with my very real very genuine very existing yes happening mm -hmm, truthful business of jammy dodgems yay <laughs> dodgem cars each covered in their very own unique flavor of fruity jammy goodness squarespace has allowed me to bring this smashing idea to life because when you're making a website with squarespace you know it's gonna be amazing because squarespace is bubbling with brilliant features one such feature that helps me dodge any issues is squarespace's new guided design system squarespace blueprint this lets you choose from professionally curated layout and styling options to build your unique online space your website will be tailored to your business or website idea and optimized for every device and once your website is ready squarespace's optimized seo tools will help you hit the internet sweet spot so you can get discovered fast and grow the way you want just like a little raspberry on a bush bump up your creativity with squarespace's pre-built layouts helping you create all the pages you might need with ease as page elements can be arranged quickly and easily to showcase your content add or remove blocks to create a custom look for specific purposes including contact about blogs products and so much more once you have all your pages ready to go and the engines are revving you can use squarespace's asset library to upload organize and access all of your content from one place this means i can manage all of my files from one central hub and use them across the squarespace platform sharpenize actual squarespace website was super easy and fun to make and something we're really proud of and something that's not going anywhere we're not quitting that one that is here to stay so whatever your website idea if you're looking to build a community if you're an awesome entrepreneur or if you want to be a rival jam covered dodge and provider you can turn any idea into a website with squarespace to get yourself started go to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch go to squarespace.com forward slash jammy dodger for 10 percent off your first purchase of a website or domain the link's in the description box thank you for listening now back to the am i the asshole am i the asshole for blowing up on my husband's friend after her wife died uh -huh. am i the asshole for blowing up on my husband's friend after her wife died do they mean blowing up by like getting mad at like explosively annoyed at it depends on why my 36f husband ian 44m is close friends with a woman named jenna they've been friends for a long time before ian and i got together so i know her fairly well too but we really have nothing in common and we're not exactly friends okay jenna's wife laura very sadly and somewhat suddenly passed in early march she was terminally ill but responding to treatment very well and was expected to survive another two to five years that is devastating oh my god she's been leaning on ian heavily for support which i understand but she's been at our house every single day since and even sleeping in our guest room most nights because she doesn't want to be home alone okay which would be okay except she's getting more and more passive aggressive towards me and weirdly territorial of ian okay i've reminded myself that i don't think i could stand to see a happy couple for months if i lost ian and to be patient it's not personal it's such a tricky situation yeah there is a limit on how much and for how long you can help people and particularly this kind of help like she cannot live with you forever and regardless of what she's been through it's not an excuse to create an uncomfortable environment in your house between you and your husband but it's so hard to get that balance right between supporting somebody who's going through like a really horrendous time and also laying out your own boundaries in your life to make sure that your relationship and what you do is not like negatively impacted my birthday was on sunday i got home saturday after a morning out and jenna was there i was making small talk when i asked ian what time he made dinner reservations for the next day jenna inserted herself right there and asked ian if he was going to be out the next day and he said yes she started panicking and saying that he couldn't and she wasn't ready to spend an evening alone i was going to tell her that she could still hang out here while we were gone and she looked at me and said don't you have any f friends you can go with oh no see grief is awful and i think it can really change people and it's such a difficult thing to deal with but that kind of behavior isn't okay like you're in somebody else's house this is their relationship they are doing their best to support you but it cannot be 24 7 110 percent all the time they also need to get on with their own lives and i think the support they've offered is quite immense this woman deserves to go out with her husband for her birthday 
birthday without her husband's friend like inserting herself into that and like where are jenna's other friends surely ian isn't her only friend and i just blew the f up i potentially would at this point as well to be fair don't you have any other f friends you can go bother and so on she called me selfish for monopolizing my husband she called me selfish for monopolizing my husband oh wait did jenna say you're selfish for monopolizing your husband but the quote marks made it seem like jenna was referring to ian as jenna's husband monopolizing my husband and i had enough and told her to get out of my house and not to come back ever ian had been trying to calm things down between us but it spiraled out of control fast and he ended up escorting jenna out and telling her that he'd come visit her in a few days but he'd be backing my decision because of how she spoke to me i am very glad that ian is supporting his wife i feel like that is maybe an indication of what my badge is already i was happy for his support and still am but it's been a few days and i just feel bad all around about it i should have been more understanding of her but i also feel like she should treat me more respectfully and i'm not really sure if i overreacted i think it's so hard when somebody is going through such a difficult time to know exactly what the best kind of support is to give them this couple op and her husband sound like they were really giving her like space time and support but she was very much encroaching onto their lives and their relationship in a way that was crossing a boundary and whatever somebody is going through there are still lines that should not be crossed in how they treat other people and we can be a bit more forgiving and a bit more patient with people who are going through a really shit time but you have essentially been taken in by a couple who are caring for you letting you stay in their guest room taking their time out to spend time with you maybe sacrificing couple time to make sure that you are supported and not only have there been things happening that are a bit uncomfortable and potentially inappropriate that have made op not feel very comfortable with the situation and she still carried on allowing it to happen but like literally she can go out to dinner with her husband and i think if you're not ready to be left on your own there needs to be a larger network of support to go to or even like professional support to speak to if you are struggling to that extent which is totally fair if jenna is struggling to that extent because she's literally just lost her wife but the burden of the support through that cannot all be put on one or two people it cannot be put on one couple it's a lot and i would always want to be there to support a friend you know if they were to ever go through something similar I will be there as much as I can be but there is still a limit and there's still a limit to how you are prepared to be spoken to and treated and a limit to what you can forgive and let slide because of what somebody's been through so I'm gonna say not the asshole. I can see why OP feels so bad though because you kind of almost feel like you need to just let people get away with anything when they're going through such a tough time but I don't think that's healthy either I think people still need to operate within a boundary of respectful behavior towards others even when they're going through a shit time there can just be more leniencies on those boundaries in that moment but there are still boundaries you can't just let somebody treat you however and walk all over you and it's such a common thing that if people overstep a boundary and then you excuse it away because of something they're experiencing it's then you that feels guilty for standing up for yourself in a situation where they were disrespectful or treated you inappropriately i personally don't think op overreacted maybe they'd not come back ever I think I'd still be open to like supporting but it would be from a distance in my opinion it would be like you know Ian taking on most of the role as support because Jenna is his friend primarily and I will support him in doing that <laughs> but I perhaps would not have her over to my house for a while and it, we wouldn't have the same arrangement that we'd had for the past couple months yeah so not the a-hole and I feel bad because I almost want to say no drama here because I appreciate Jenna's going through a really tough time but I, I still think that she d behaved wrongly and that's wrong regardless regardless of her current circumstances. Oh. Oh dear. That was a lot less about LGBT plus themes than I thought it would be from the title. I kind of assumed there would be something about it in there. But also passive rep. It's not anything to do with their sexual orientation. It's a situation that any couple and like pretty much all couples at some point will deal with. Whether they're young or old, it can, you know, people die. Oh, that's pretty sad. I'm sorry for what Jenna is going through. It must be super shit, but it doesn't give her a right to encroach on your life in the way that she has. What do other people 
people have to say. Not the asshole. She was so far out of line and especially in your own home. I'd also sit down with your husband and talk about it. To me personally, it really seems like she likes your husband more than just a good friend. I understand she had a wife, but maybe she's bi and hasn't been open with it. Oh, I completely overlooked that line about her behaving a bit inappropriately towards the husband. Yeah, she's not necessarily gay just because she had a wife. She could be bi, pan, and other various sex orientations that are not straight but not gay. It is very reassuring that Ian is on OP's side though, as he should be with this. I would not want to be in, I mean, any of their positions, to be honest. It's a tricky situation because I'm sure Ian feels some kind of duty of care over his friend to make sure that she's okay. But if she's overstepping a boundary, both in terms of respect and also how she behaves towards him specifically, that is going to be a bit awkward and uncomfortable. I guess what this commenter kind of opens up the discussion of is Jenna acting the way she's acting because she still needs that level of support for her grief, which very may well be possible and I'm not discounting, or has it moved into more that she just wants to spend a lot of time with Ian, or like a combination of the two, it's difficult to know. I mean, I suspect it's probably mostly still to do with the grief, but you never know. Wow, not the asshole. Nobody's talking to me like that in my own home. Disagree with people saying Jenna's not an asshole here, needing support and asking for it are fine, but she's crossed the line being hostile towards her friend's spouse. She got a well-deserved get the f*** out. Good for Ian for backing his wife on this one. Yeah, I think it's so hard to call somebody an asshole when they're going through such a shit time. And like I said, there can be leniencies afforded when this is happening, but overstepping in how much time you spend around people or needing a lot of support and asking a lot from those in your life, not the asshole, but being disrespectful and very, very demanding beyond just the level of like support. And when you're already being supported and helped so much, I think that's the line that Jenna crossed. Like this couple are allowed to go out for dinner. They're still helping you. They're literally just going out for a dinner together. You know, they're still allowed to get on with their lives in and around supporting you through what you're going through. And I think that's where the, there's a problem. Absolutely not the arsehole. She may be grieving, but she cannot claim your husband as her own. So she's 100% transferring some feelings onto your husband and it is not healthy or the least okay. Wow. I hope she gets to grieve and heal so she can see how bad the situation was for both of you and that you can heal as well. You have a wonderful husband who wants to do best by his friend, but also knows when to support you first and foremost. That is a beautiful thing. Yeah, I'm really glad that it doesn't seem to have caused an issue between OP and her husband, because that would be really sad. Yeah, it could be. We're learning a lot from the comments, it could be that Jenna doesn't actually have feelings for Ian, but is just transferring, like, that spousal bond and what she would expect from a spouse onto Ian, because that's the friend that's helping her through this situation, and she's obviously just lost her spouse. Wow. It sounds like she maybe needs to speak to somebody. I think therapy is fantastic. It doesn't work for everybody, but I think it's great if you can access it to try it, to just work through some of these feelings and get that more professional level of support if it's required. Okay, we have one more for today. And I'm feeling like I sold this as LGBTQ plus themed, am I the arseholes? And the first one very much was. The second one was not. It involved someone who wasn't straight and had lost her wife, which is not straight, which is LGBT. But the what it was about was not an LGBT plus theme. And this last one I've kind of put in as a joke, but I'm now realizing just how little and how weak the LGBT plus theme of this one is. So this one is called, am I the asshole for ruining my own gender reveal party? Because I know that the LGBT plus community, particularly trans people love to have a little giggle at gender reveal parties, particularly those that go wrong. And so I thought this would be a funny topic to discuss, but it definitely takes this episode away from being actually LGBT plus themed. I'm sorry, I missold this to you. So, am I the asshole for ruining my own gender reveal party? I don't see how you could ever be the asshole. It's your party. Let's see what happened, but I don't think so. I'm pregnant with a baby. What else would it be? No, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm pregnant with a baby boy due in November. My fiance and I didn't care much about the sex of our child, so we didn't make too much noise about it once we found out. The only people we'd informed were our parents, their partners, and our siblings. Okay, probably to this, my father's girlfriend of three years had been asking about plans for a gender reveal party. I've always been clear about not wanting one. When I announced my son's gender to them, she expressed disappointment that I hadn't changed my mind about a party. Why? I don't understand people who are entitled to the level of thinking that they have any right to be disappointed or expectant for somebody else to do something like this. This is OP's pregnancy, OP's child,
child, OP's relationship, if she doesn't want to do a gender reveal party, which I think are a bit bananas anyway, why the hell should she feel like you're disappointed in her for not doing that? That's really weird. I don't like gender reveals, never have, never will. I prefer baby showers, which I think feel more about the actual child. I never try to hide that opinion either. I completely agree with that. I like that opinion and I, I really don't understand why. Because now, based on the title, I'm assuming that father's girlfriend did actually just go by behind OP's back and do something because it doesn't sound like OP would throw herself a gender reveal party. Days later, my father's girlfriend invited me over for tea at their apartment. My dad was out of town. No, no, do not tell me this is going where I think it's gonna go. When I got there, about a dozen people popped out of hiding to surprise me. There were pink and blue decorations everywhere, which made what was going on pretty clear. This is awful. I'm sticking with my not the arsehole so far, We're about halfway through this story, but wow, you can't trick people people into like doing this for like a birthday party like a congratulations thing or like you know moving house or whatever where it's something that you know somebody actually wants to celebrate fair but OP was so clear about not wanting a gender reveal party if this were a surprise baby shower cute surprise gender reveal party when they already know the gender weird 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 bad weird as I stood there in shock my father's girlfriend excitedly told me they were throwing me a surprise gender reveal party since I'd already told her she she had taken it upon herself to order a cake with colourful frosting, decorate the apartment and invite a bunch of people over. The guests included her mother, whom I don't get along with, some of her friends, my mother-in-law, not my mum, and four of my friends. As I later found out, my mother-in-law and friends had been told I'd changed my mind about gender reveals. This makes me tired. Why are some people like this? Why are some people so entitled and just shitty? <sighs> I had not. Still in the doorway, I looked over at everyone and said, it's a boy, you guys can go home now. I left without looking back. Yes, I respect this so much. And if father's girlfriend gets annoyed about this, the only person she has to be annoyed at is herself because she's the one that took it upon herself to throw a party that OP didn't even want, made it really clear she didn't want. You didn't even invite the kind of people that she would want at her party. And so obviously, why the heck would she want to stay? Hours later, my father called me furious that I'd ruined the party. Well, his girlfriend threw the party. So why didn't she just have it without OP? Because it wasn't really for OP, was it? It was for her. He said his girlfriend had put a lot of effort effort, money and love into planning it and I should have shown respect and gratitude for it. Apparently she hadn't stopped crying since I left and whose fault is that? It's been almost a week and they're both still upset. Even after I explained I never wanted that party in the first place, they're insisting I could have sucked it up for an hour or at least cut the cake. Am I the asshole? No. And you know a big part of it? Like yeah, you could have sucked it up for an hour and gone to the party, cut the cake, played along, blah blah blah, but all that does is teach somebody like your father's girlfriend that doing shit like that is okay. You said you didn't want that. You already knew the gender. The whole point of gender reveal parties is the excitement if the- I don't understand them personally, but it's if the couple and all their family and friends are excited to know the sex of the baby. And nobody knows prior except for maybe one or two people who are the ones who organised the surprise. And like the- whether it's like a cake or a balloon. But it needs to be something that's led by the couple having the baby, or be done as a surprise if it's something that they have expressed wanting. It definitely should not be done if it's something that they have expressed not wanting. I would never throw even a surprise birthday party for somebody if they express not wanting it. It's always things that people want or where it'd be very reasonable to think that they wanted it and they have not suggested otherwise. But OP was very clear in not wanting that. And I always get the vibe that some people are, you let them get away with one thing and then they're just going to run with that. And so this sets a very clear precedent to father's girlfriend that OP's not going to stand for this kind of shit and you shouldn't. You didn't want a party, you said you didn't want a party, it wasn't even a party with your nearest, like your mother wasn't even, you didn't invite your own mother to your gender reveal party, like what the hell? So you didn't want to do it, sure. I actually really respect that and I don't think you even ruined your own gender reveal party because it wasn't your party, it was your father's girlfriend's party and she's upset that you ruined it for her and that's just selfish. Not the asshole. Other commenters say, not the asshole. This smacks of her trying to prove that she cares about you more than your mum, especially seeing as how your mum wasn't invited or she turned down the invitation to respect your wishes. She doesn't seem to get that the way to prove she cares about you at all is to actually listen to what you want and don't want. Yeah, I didn't even 
think about rivalry with OP's mum. That's interesting. Wow. You're not the asshole. You made yourself very clear in how you felt about gender reveal parties. Your dad's girlfriend completely and deliberately disregarded that and disrespected you. And then they've quoted a bit about how the girlfriend put effort, money and love into planning it. And they said, so sorry, the party she planned for herself was ruined. Maybe she should have gone a step further and not even invited you since this party was all about what she wanted. I completely agree with this. This party was not about OP. This party was about the father's girlfriend for whatever reason, whether it was rivalry, whether it was trying to prove something, whether it was just because she wanted a party. I don't know. Not the asshole. It wasn't your gender reveal party. It was her boyfriend's daughter's baby's gender reveal party. Nothing about that party was for or about you so why should you feel gratitude for it yep not that asshole that was incredibly rude she straight up lied and your dad is salty he should be mad at her for disrespecting your wishes she wanted that party for herself not you exactly exactly and i'm so disappointed and upset for op that her dad is just completely siding with girlfriend and cannot call out her behavior because i do think people like his girlfriend need to be told when they've done something wrong you messed up you did something incredibly selfish for what whatever weird selfish reason she had for doing it, I don't care. And it was just very inappropriate for her to do and really weird. And like, why would you expect somebody to have any other reaction than saying, enjoy the party, I'm leaving? Because she literally said she didn't want it. I just put people baffle me, baffled by people on the internet and in the world. Anyway, those are the three Am I the Asshole posts that we're looking at today. I'm losing my voice from all of this reading. <clears throat> oh my God. Also, just come off like three back-to-back -back book events a couple days ago so I'm feeling very tired and very talked out. If you did like this video think about giving a thumbs up and subscribing if you want to but no pressure and go join the conversation down in the comments below. You can also go click that link in the description box to go check out Squarespace which I would highly recommend and maybe leave a comment down below about what job you want me to do next because I change so much that I always need new suggestions of what to try out next and yeah as always thank you so so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Much love. Bye.